Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. And as you can see, today I'm thrilled to be joining in on a hop to celebrate my lovely friend Mel W Scrapping's 500 subscribers on YouTube. Fantastic achievement, Mel. I'm really proud of you. So um, today you can see in the top right hand corner, I am scrap lifting one of Mel's layouts. The brief from Mel was to either scrap lift one of her layouts or scrap lift somebody who has encouraged you to do something you didn't think that you could do. And um, this covers both of the elements in the brief because Mel has been a great supporter of mine right from the start when I was really nervous about setting up this channel. And she really is a lovely all round person. So go check out her channel and everybody else who's following along in this hop. They'll all be listed down below. So this picture that I've chosen is this one of my children with Sophie, Leanne's daughter, when we were in Disneyland Paris in 2014. And I'm using an All and Create stencil to create my background, along with a shimmers paint in green olive. And the brush I'm using is one of the new stencil brushes that we've got in at Hey Little Magpie. This works perfectly for detail work or for using with um, wet medium because it's very densely packed bristles. So if you've got a thick paint, it'll work really nicely with stencils. And that's what I'm doing here with the shimmers. I haven't watered it down. Some of it's leaked underneath the, the stencil slightly where I got the brush a little bit wet, but that's fine because it's going to be covered at the end. And I really don't mind that look anyway. So you can see I'm just moving the stencil around, um, matching it up as I go to create a bigger mat for the photo, just to copy the stenciling that Mel's got on her layout there. And now I'm going to come in with the coordinating stamp. So this is the positive part where the stencil gives you the negative part and it's slightly smaller than stencil. And I just love this shape so very much. So I'm just showing, because I'm using this for the first time, I'm priming my stamp. So I'm just stamping it down onto some scrap paper a couple of times just until the ink sticks properly to the stamp. You have to do that with new stamps. So just going through until it shows a proper black and then I can get that onto my layout. Mel's used a black stamp on hers, so I just wanted to copy that a little bit. So using my archival ink, because I know I want to splatter my layout at the end um, with water and I don't want this to bleed at all. I want it to be a nice crisp image. And there you go, you can see it's a beautiful dense black. So just one more stamp on the right hand side. And then that's the background done. So now coming in with my photo and I'm going to use Spectrum Sherbet from 49er Market. These colours work absolutely beautifully with this photo. Uh, you've got the greens and then the pinks, oranges and yellows. So first of all using this scrap which has the orange and the pink. And then um, using another scrap of orange, <laughs> just using what I've got really, really cut up. And then this element piece. So first of all, I'm going to map my photo with white, just so that it pops out a little bit from all the layers that I'm putting behind it. And I'm sticking cl fairly closely to Mel's original layout here. So just getting that photo stuck down and then I'll trim off the excess on that left hand side. And I don't know why I reach my scissors when my trimmer is right there, but <laughs> there you go. That's me. So I'm just going to use my edge distresser to distress those edges of these scraps that I've got. And then start layering up. And this paper is so thick, it really does cause quite a lot of dimension on the layout when you're using this many layers. So just working out exactly how they're going to layer before I distress those edges and then get it stuck down. There we go. So now I shall carry on with the layers. I decide I want to use this scrap that was at the bottom of that piece. So. Again, just distressing those edges and I'll pop that along the bottom. Just forgot to distress that bit, so <laughs> just doing that. And 
and now to this piece and obviously it's too big so I'm just going to tear off the excess and I shall keep that for another day. I'm distressing the edges again. This is already um, quite distressed but I just wanted that white core to show. So just checking how which orientation I want this to go because I've got that green piece as well and that was actually trimmed off the packaging from the uh, laser laser cut elements I think it was. So it's slightly more shiny than the other papers, but that doesn't bother me. The colour was just perfect. Matches the fireworks that are in the background of the photo here. So just getting that glued down and then I can start working on the actual main layout. So that's approximately where I want the photo to go. So now I'm going to go the, through the ephemera. As you can see, I've not got a great deal left in this collection. And I did struggle a bit. You'll see, I wasn't quite sure what to use. I saw this notebook edge, so I thought, yep, that's great. I'll add that down. That's obviously just something that I trimmed off in the past, so it's good to get that used. And then I find some tags, which I think might work. These tickets are going to work along there, so I pop those down as well. And then I realised I haven't actually stuck the photo down. <laughs> so I get that stuck down. And then I can carry on. And you'll see I just put the glue in the middle of the photo so there's plenty of room to tuck around the edges. At first I think I'm going to use this blue ticket but then when I look at the photo there isn't really any blue in it or very little. So I didn't want anything that big in blue on there. Just focusing on the green, orange, yellow and pink. So that tab at the top is blue. There is a tiny bit of blue in the fireworks in the background of the photo, so I don't mind a little bit like that. And now I'm just looking at things that might work in that cluster that Mel's got on the right-hand side there. Back to the bottom and having to play with all the different things. I quite like this chipboard frame, and I think I'm going to layer it up with other circular bits. I do like that joy, but uh, I'm not too sure at the moment. Sorry, there's the joy. It was a yellow circle I put there first of all, wasn't it? So I decided I don't want this as a tag, so I trim the edge off. And I like that I've got best friends forever, but it just doesn't seem to work for me, no matter how much I try. I like this yellow ticket, so that goes underneath. Just creating more layers. And then I pick up this chipboard piece that says Together Forever and that works much better for me. I think it's the banner shape that I like. And then into my 49er Market um, essential tickets in the red and I just pull out the piece that says Photographs and the piece that has the arrows on. Not exactly sure where they're going to go but just keeping them like that for now. And then a couple of the other tickets from the rolls. I like that deep red, but I didn't really want the printing to show, so I'm just using the reverse of that. So adding that chipboard banner down. Still fiddling about with that right hand side. I like this frame, but it definitely doesn't work on this layout. So just trying to get things glued down while I remember. <laughs> and these bits I know they're definitely going to stay there, so may it put down. I like that yellow ticket there. It really makes everything pop. There's not a lot of that bright yellow in this layout, so. I decided I want the arrows coming out to the right hand side there, but it needs something to ground it. So I just found this scrap of yellow paper that I just popped back in with the other papers. And that worked really nicely there. Another label layered on top of those tickets. And it's time to get those stuck down. I've had a little think and I'm definitely happy with that. Just distressing the edges so it matches everything else. 
and then I can get that stuck down. And when that's down, I realise that the chipboard joy circle needs to go above it. So that just nestles in really nicely there. And then one of the JD 3D print wood cameras. Just adding plenty of glue so it sticks. So I want to add my date to that top tab that I've put up there. 29th of May 2014, just using my roller date stamp and my archive link again. Again, just so that it doesn't bleed if the uh, gold splatters at the end go on it. So getting that stuck up the top there in amongst all the layers. And this is where I change things ever so slightly. Mel's got her cluster on the right hand side of the page, which matches her photo absolutely perfectly. But for whatever reason, I just couldn't get that to work. So my cluster's going at the top right hand side. I hope that's okay, Mel. It's... um. Close to what you've done. <laughs> Artistic license, we'll call it, shall we? So I'm just cutting out this ticket that was on one of the pattern papers in the 6x8 paper pad. And that brings that yellow up to the top. So I've got all the colours on the layout up at that top cluster. So getting them all stuck down, I'm trying to remember what I've done. <laughs> Of course, I forget halfway through. I think this piece goes underneath, but no, it needs to go on top. So, on a layer, I realise that you can't really see any of it. That's it. That's more like it. <laughs> And there we go, that's the top cluster sorted. No, didn't put enough glue on that camera. As I've mentioned in the past, it's not brilliant glue this, it's fine, but it's not great. So just coming in with a tiny bit of journaling here, there's not a lot to say about this photo. It's going in the album with lots of other Disneyland photos. So I just said, such fun to be had at Disneyland Paris with photo ops around every corner. So now I'm going to dig through my little tub of treasures. These are all the new bits and pieces that we've got at Hey Little Magpie. So I'm using one of the puffy hearts, a couple of puffy stars, just trying to work out positioning and also colours. I do change that heart out for one of the orange ones. I really like how that looks. It's a really nice, vibrant, bright orange. And these silver and gold stars are They've got almost like a reflective quality inside them, like an iridescent thing. So now some Black Nouveau dots. This just brings the black around the page a little more because I've got it in that stamping and not really anywhere else. And then finally I'll finish off with some gold splatters from my Heidi Swap Colour Shine. I'm also going to go into my old deep dive stash to see what I've got and I do find a couple of bits and pieces. These are Studio Calico stickers that I've been working on on layouts previously. They're almost done now but I managed to get a couple more on this one. That green sticker at the bottom says you are awesome so it fits really nicely with the kids. Then these are Illustrated Faith labels and again the colours just work really nicely so a little green one on the right hand side and a pink one on the left plus this orange which goes right on top of the nouveau. <laughs> That's why I should have done it after I'd done this. It's typical, isn't it? So I don't get that label quite as far down as I wanted to. So I'm just going to cover up the blank spots with some um, enamel dots, glittery enamel dots. Then I had a camera at the top from Ellie's studio and here I am with the gold colour shine. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Please do check the description down below for everybody joining in and go check out Mel's channel and give her some love. She really is a lovely lady. Thanks again. Bye.